Hey, how's it going everyone? Super Tonky here with more Fallout 4 Vats Only. Last time was a shorter video than I was expecting. Even though I kind of, like, apologized at the end of it, I still had no idea it was only going to be less than 20 minutes. Yeah, that's just home sweet home for you. That quest is something else in survival mode. But anyway, with that behind us, we now have Power Play, so we will be finishing up with Nuka World today, which means getting some fantastic perks at the end of it. But to start things off, we do need to go ahead and talk to Shank. I just got word. You need to get back to Nuka World. Now. The pack have turned on us. Mason didn't like how you were handing out new territory. Now him and his whole gang have gone and stormed Nuka World's power plant. The other bosses are waiting on you before they move in. So we're gonna head back to Nuka World and show Mason and the pack what's what. But before we do, there are a few things I need to take care of here. First, remember that suppressed Gauss rifle I got? Yeah, let's actually put that suppressor on my violent Gauss rifle. And I had been kind of avoiding doing this because of the decrease in range, but I think now more than before, it's going to be important for me to stay in stealth because of the low health I have. Also, we are going to be getting the Ace Operator perk that's going to increase the damage of silenced weapons. And I'm thinking with this unyielding build, the extra perception is going to kind of make up for that loss in range. That's the hope anyway. And I think while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and take Mr. Sandman for more sneak attack damage on my silenced weapons. Something I maybe should have gotten beforehand, but it's just going to further increase the damage of the Gauss Rifle. Not like it really needs it in most situations, but that legendary death claw last time did have me a little bit concerned. And I don't know if I just missed it last time, but going through here, I'm really questioning why I didn't choose Sunshine Tidings for my second Raider Outpost. That would have been way better than Oberland Station. And here we go, into Nuka World. We can go ahead and take down any pack members along the way. And yeah, I think I am going to just go straight through the area here with the market. All right, that's a disciple. They're on my side. Here we go. Pack pillager and waster. And a uh, great. <laughs> Apparently, if the trader sees me kill someone, they're going to be marked as hostile now. All right, there's another pack member. Oh, and then there's also Harvey, who is just doing his job. There's gotta be more around here, right? Yeah, you're part of the pack. Uh, let's not kill the traitor. Oh no, that's Harvey. We'll leave him alone. And we've made our way all the way around. So I think we're good. I was just doing my job. Having Harvey there does complicate things because he does put me in danger. I guess while I'm here, we may as well grab this clue. That's clue number nine. One left. And then the one left is the one I forgot to get in Dry Rock Gulch. So I guess we can go this way. I think there are cave crickets along the way, but I mean, I've dealt with them before. And of course, there are ghouls too. If I remember correctly, the cave crickets are down that way somewhere. But we'll take out the ghouls here first. Oh, whoops. And a roamer, I think this is the last one. Okay, yeah. Back down and hidden. 
And yep, cave cricket. Couple piercers. Are they? Uh, they've got equal resistances. Man, I am not getting very good hit chances here, though. I guess that's a little better. I mean, that's why I have concentrated fire. For how deadly these things are, they sure give crap experience. The Festering Bloatfly? Those are only level 17. I thought they were higher than that for some reason. Uh, the Glowing Bloatfly is higher level. Huh. I'm not sure if I realized that. And there's a Deathclaw over here too, isn't there? Another, all right, round two. And this time I'll make sure to hit it in the belly. There we go. That's how we take him out. Uh, somewhere kind of close to this area there were, whoa, what's that? Our first mythic death claw. Level 91. Wow. What do you have for me? A never-ending plasma pistol. That's pretty cool. Completely useless for my build, but on any other run it would be pretty neat. Oh, we've got a battle going on over here. Who's fighting this time? Let's check it out. We have operators, which means they're gonna be fighting against gunners. Don't see any legendaries so far. Uh, battle music, though. Did I get spotted? I'm only in a caution. Oh, there's a legendary. We'll have to see what they have once the fighting's over. Or maybe they'll get killed. They are taking some damage. Guess we'll see if the gunner captain can take it out. And then let's help this one out over here. Oh, come on, let me target him. Where's this guy? Back there. Okay, let's line some criticals, maybe? Yeah. Alright. So the legendary operator is still alive somewhere. Let's see what they were carrying. You are not an easy person to find. What do you got? Alright, you are safe. I do not need that. Unfortunately, it is getting to be daylight now. So that's not great for trying to use stealth. And let's stick to the path here, I think. We have ants up there. Which I think normally leave you alone. But then, typically up by this tree, there's just a crap ton of cave crickets. I guess sometimes it can be bloodworms, though. Maybe it's not always cave crickets. Let's see what we got. Okay. I'm pretty sure if there's nothing here, it means bloodworms. And just an overgrown ant there, which I can't really target anymore, so... Oh wait, should I just kill it? Yeah. No reason not to. Apparently I didn't rile anything up, so... Alrighty, how's it going everyone? Mason's dug in pretty well up there. I knew that nut job would turn on us sooner or later. So, are we storming the place or what? Both of you shut up. We're about to find out. The boss is here. Mason's gathered up his animal goons and took the power plant. That asshole thinks he'll get away with this. He's dead wrong. Let's skin him alive and savor every minute of it. Just 
calm down and start at the beginning? I'll be calm once I get Mason's blood on my hands. But if you want a story, fine. While you were gone, we're I actually don't really want a story. Let's just go kill him. He's as good as dead. Music to my ears. Time to clean. We got hmm. your back, boss. Great, let's go. Yeah, I just skipped through that dialogue. <laughs> He's like, story time? <laughs> just thinking, nah. Let's just go do it. I've heard all I need to. And then we do have the death claws over here. Because kind of veering off the road, as long as you can take out the death claws, is kind of the better option. Hey, there's one. A matriarch. Go ahead and take you out. And then there's an alpha. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to, I think, a lever action. Maybe build back that critical. There we go. And there is a pack pillager. I can probably just stick with the uh, combat rifle through here, I think. Right. Yeah, we'll take you out too. First try. I'm surprised I was able to target him way up there. Oh. Oh no, let me target him again. The tormentor. Ooh, a legendary. That did not do very much damage. Another critical. Do I have another? Uh, I think he might be behind something. Uh, I didn't line up enough shots. Here we go. And we're in hidden somehow. Alright. Are you the legendary? You. Another powered piece of Nuka Raider gear. Not quite as good stats as the Disciples one we got last time, but I'll pick it up for now. I'm not seeing any more pack I can target up above. So let's just head in. Whoa. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'm gonna hope I don't get Penetrator there. Let's get a critical on that legendary charcoal. There we go. Uh, I was hoping I would be able to stay ahead of these guys. But I don't think that's gonna be possible here. Come on, just shoot him. Thank you. Mutant Slayers. Eh, yeah, we can leave that behind. Alright, battle music. And our lovely turret up there. I, I was almost able to target that guy. This part's kind of annoying because I really want to get involved. But Mags and William and all of them are just so dumb. They actually managed to take out the turret, though. I feel like last time I went through here, they had a tough time with that. I also want to stay away from their grenades, too. So, yeah, this mission, it's frequently disappointing in that way. I would like to take a more active role, but the smart option is not to. Oh. Hello, pack survivalist. I guess this kind of works. <laughs> Max and William forcing them to kind of back into me. Here we go. Ooh, a legendary. Nice. Critical strike didn't take it out. But the follow up that non critical did. Alright. 
Got that one. And I got this guy. Don't you guys worry about a thing. Oh wait, I already have an unyielding chest piece. Dang it. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. What the? Oh. And to caution. Uh, I'll give it one more try once they their head goes past that bar. There we go. Scaver. Yay, grenades. I got a good shot on this guy. Nice. Right, there's William. Probably... Oh, here we go. Very good. All the pack dealt with. Let's see what kind of ghouls are around here. Hoping that's a legendary chard. Nice. And <laughs> a junkie's laser pistol. We also have the Nuka Power recipe. More Nuka Colas. Huh, this also has some modifications on it that could be interesting. So I'll pick that up. And another ghoul. Uh, not a legendary, just a normal charred ghoul. Also, I think what's kind of interesting is that now that I'm doing a unyielding build, on average I'm actually getting less experience than before because Idiot Savant isn't triggering as often. Alright, Mason. Goss Rifle. Ooh. Took a Goss Rifle to the face. Impressive. I think there's a one more pack member up here. William's probably going to take him out. Or maybe I will. Yeah. I got this. So, we got the key off of Mason. And we won't have nighttime fireworks, but oh well. Let's see. Yeah, Nuka Grape. Very nice. Yay! Freedom! Well, that was nice. <laughs> Let's move on. Hey, a stealth boy. That I keep forgetting I have. Mags. If you need me, I'll meet you back in Nuka Town. Ooh, and we've got a legendary Yagwai down there. We will definitely need to go check that out. Let's see. Hopefully... Oh. Hopefully this is a safe drop. It, it's gotta be, right? Yeah. A dusky Yaogoi. Wow. Why can't I target your face? Oh, there we go. Oh, there's a third Yagoi. Okay. Let's see what's going on with that legendary. A duelist's arm. Man, it's too bad I couldn't have gotten a duelist chess piece and an unyielding arm. But that's just how it works sometimes. Oh. And some bugs on the way back. And 
On our way back, we have flying ant swarms over by the tree. Let's just try to take them out. Oh, and bloodworms. Great. Well, the blade damage seems to do pretty well. But I'm kind of afraid that the bloodworms are just going to teleport over to me. Holy crap, that's a lot of ant swarms. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen a slow mo like that. <laughs> With the, when it comes to the ant swarms, that's kind of funny. Well, it looks like the bloodworms didn't detect me actually, so that's wait. Is it dead? I didn't end up hitting it, did I? This might be a bad idea, but okay. Let's go. I just wanted to see if it was a legendary venomous. Yeah, we'll take out more ants. Get out of here, ants. A legendary ant. A violent 10 millimeter? Not terrible. But I kind of like my wounding one a little better. And we can see if this place repopulated with more people fighting. I see a pack member. Who's <laughs> immediately gets shot by the operators. Way to go, operators. That's another operator there. So many grenades flying everywhere with these fights. Here we go. Okay, somehow that didn't hit me. And these guys are just kind of in my way. Here we go. Got him. Ooh, gazelles. Get some more gazelle meat. Also, go ahead. Holy crap! Apparently I did not kill all the bloodworms. Jeez. That made me jump out of my seat there. <laughs> uh, at least we got a save cracker's right leg. So yeah, I'm stopping in at Dry Rock Gulch to get the last of the cappy clues. Here we go, final clue. And that's all ten clues. Better get these back to Sierra and see what you can make of them. So let's talk to Gage. Nuka World. All lit up. It's goddamn beautiful. It sure is. I haven't seen any place like it in a long time. It ain't just the lights, boss. Now that Mason is gone, 
and most of the pack has been taken out, there's not much left to stop us. We've made one hell of a mark on the Commonwealth. There ain't a soul from here to Diamond City that hasn't heard of us. And despite what happened at the power plant, <coughs> the rest of our gangs are stronger than ever. I took a big chance helping you take down Coulter. Glad that paid off. You know the real difference between him and you? The reason that the rest of us are behind you? You were willing to bleed for us. You put your neck on the line to get us ahead in this shitty world. And believe it or not, that means something to us. Thanks, Gage. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Just don't let it go to your head. Piss me off, and I'll still kick your ass from here to the Atlantic. So I guess the next move is yours to make. With the power to the park back online, you might want to <coughs> cover old ground and see if you can get into some of the places that were cut off. Or maybe hit up Shank and take out a few more Commonwealth settlements. Sounds like we still have plenty of trouble to get into. I guess we better get started. Then I guess that does it, boss. There's plenty of caps out there just waiting to be taken. And there we go. We have the Chosen Disciple and Ace Operator perks. I forget what Chosen Disciple does. Kills made by your melee weapons will restore some of your action points. Eh, it's okay. The main reason I went with the Disciples is because of the reward that Nisha gives you. And then, obviously, Ace Operator is just insane. Your stealth is increased while in shadows, and you deal more damage with silenced weapons. And it's not just sneak attack damage, it's base damage. And it increases all silenced weapon damage by, I think, 25%? Pretty insane perk. So at this point, I think I'm gonna sleep because I have gotten pretty tired. I've been having to take a few Nuka Colas here. And while we're here, and since we already went ahead and got all the cappy clues, let's go ahead and just complete Sierra's mission real quick. I feel like it would also be probably a good idea to take out the rest of the pack, which could be dangerous. Because we basically just have to go through the front door. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll take some food ahead of time. Alright, we've got a bunch of food buffs active, so yeah, let's get it. Wait, are there even pack members in here? Or are they automatically cleared out when you complete that mission? Yeah, there's like no one here. Well, I guess I took all that food for nothing. Unless there's still some down there. Huh, okay. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense that... While I was taking care of, uh, I guess we had to take out this thing. I guess, it, I mean, I guess it would make sense that while I was taking care of the power plant, the disciples and operators down here would have taken care of the pack. Let's just go backstage and double check. Anyone home? Nope. They are all gone. Okay. I could have sworn that the last time I had the disciples turn on me, this was not the case with them, and that I had to take them out at the uh, the mountain, you know, their, their hideout. But maybe I'm not remembering that correctly. Okay, well, I guess I ate all that food for nothing. <laughs> we'll go ahead and talk to Sierra now. I found all the hidden cappies. Each one had a letter? Great, let me take a look at these letters. Well, anyone who stared at Nuka-Cola merchandise as long as I have would get this one pretty fast. The letters definitely spell refreshing. It's simpler than I was expecting. Of course it's simple. The contest was meant for kids. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. This door should lead to Brad Burton's office, but uh -huh. I guess we just need to key in the ten numbers that correspond to the word refreshing. You did all the work looking for the hidden copies, so you should be the one who gets to enter the code. Okay. That's it! The door's unlocked! Let's go inside. Let's search carefully. I'm willing to bet this place has a few secrets, and they'll probably be well hidden. I'm not even totally sure why I'm doing this quest. It's very unlikely I'm even going to use the weapon from here, but, ah, uh, whatever. Henry 
regards to Nuka-Cola Clear Production, I think it's obvious that we need to take a step back and examine the facts. Project Cobalt dropped Quantum in our laps, so I think it's best we leverage its potential popularity before someone else beats us to market. Additionally, installing the equipment to produce both flavors would cost us a pretty penny, and I'd rather use the funds to promote Quantum. We also have our Lemon Lime flavor debuting soon, and need to work out how to market two clear colored flavors simultaneously. With all these factors taken into account, I have no choice but to hold off Nuka-Cola clear production for at least the next two fiscal years. Well, that was interesting. I guess. Mm, now this looks interesting. Come on. Hey, that's almost what I just said. On Earth? No. It can't be. That's John Caleb Bradburton! Or at least it's his head. Wow! Who... Who are you? I haven't seen a real human face in so long. I had given up all hope. Oh my god! It's alive! He's alive! My name's Sierra, sir. I'm your biggest admirer. I love Nuka-Cola more than anything. This is such an honor. You there, with the pit boy What are you doing here? I forget what I chose last time I did this. I'll try what I hope is a different dialogue option. This has to be a joke. You trespass in my private vault, in my office, in my amusement park. And you have the gall to treat me like some joke. Oh, what's the use? Look at me. Look at me! I'm a monster, trapped in a prison of my own making. This was General Braxton's plan all along. Damn the man. He called it Project Cobalt. In exchange for my weapon design, he would give me access to life-extending technology. I'm such a fool for taking him at his word. He never told me that this would be the price. When something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. You don't think I know that? You don't think I've contemplated my folly for decades on end? I do not need some interloper to remind me of my greatest tragedy. A... Uh, a weapon? I don't believe it. Why would the genius who brought so much joy to the world want to make something destructive? Genius is restless, madam. It must expand, seek new challenges, and explore new frontiers. So yes, a weapon. It was going to be a quantum-enhanced variant of the standard portable tactical warhead. In fact, the prototypes are stored in this very chamber. You can have them. On one condition. I want you to shut off the power to this machine that's keeping me alive. I want to die. What? No! There's gotta be a better solution than killing you. That's easy for you to say. Standing there on your own two legs. Able to go where you wish and do what you want. You can't kill him. He's a great man. He invented Nuka-Cola. The best thing in the world lady you don't know what a torment it is being trapped here alone and staring at the same wall decade after decade now please shut up while i talk to your more rational friend here i realize that what i'm asking isn't easy but there's something in it for you when the power is cut the door to the prototype storage room will open automatically Take anything you want. I don't care anymore. Just please, set me free at last. I can't bear this loneliness any longer. Wait, 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 wait. I have an idea. Mr. Bradburton wants to die because he's lonely, right? Well, maybe I could stay with him, you know? Keep him company, give him someone to talk to. He's like a hero to me. You've got a point. But I want compensation for the prototype ammo I won't be getting. Well, uh, I do have one thing that might interest you. 
I've got a limited edition Nuka Cola jumpsuit. It's really stylish, and not many were made. It's one of my most treasured possessions, but. Well. I'm willing to let you have it. A Nuka Cola jumpsuit? Ha! That's a paltry prize compared to what I'm offering. The choice is yours. But I beg you to honor my wishes. I couldn't stand being a frozen head. You know what? That I prototype sounds cola. great, but Sierra did say that the jumpsuit is very stylish, so I'm not really sure how I could turn her down. Sierra. I'm almost afraid to ask, but what's your decision? I'll accept your offer. I won't shut the power off. Thank you, thank you, thank you! You're doing the right thing! After all, this is a great man we're talking about. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a living legend to talk to. Good luck running Nuka World! Very good. Can't be in a haystack complete. And we got the jumpsuit. So yeah, Sierra and Brad Burton are going to have a nice time getting to know each other. And everyone's happy. So, I feel like this went a little quicker than I was expecting. Although, wait, hang on a second. We have more to do. Let's go in to the parlor and talk to Mags. I have to hand it to you over, boss. Things have progressed nicely. The park's on its feet again. We're finally set up in the Commonwealth. The pack being shown their way out of existence was certainly a pleasant surprise. I suppose Gage wasn't wrong to put so much faith in you. You've certainly earned your place here. Just making the best of a bad situation, I suppose. I'd say you did an adequate job, considering. You've come a long way, after all. Because what it took to get where you are now, the burned bridges, the salted earth, there is no going back. Like it or not, you're one of us. But, as luck would have it, it would seem that this was the life you were meant for. Dang! I was hoping I could be a pony. Sorry, boss. Take it from experience. There's no use in fighting who you are. You can only either let your nature consume you, fall to booze and chems like the rabble around this place, or you can embrace it, let it drive you. So, with that in mind, I hope you'll appreciate the earnestness with which I mean this. Welcome home, Overboss. Here is to a bright future. Sweet. We got a Relentless Operator's Handmade Rifle. So I think I might actually end up using this, because handmade rifles are great. Although, I feel like their biggest strength is the amount of recoil they have, which doesn't really matter in Vance. But overall, there is still a pretty strong weapon. And this one comes with an advanced receiver. Holy crap. And I mean, it's got a perk that benefits from VATS. So yeah, seems like a good choice. Okay, and then we just have to talk to Nisha. Yo, Nisha. Hello? Not bad, boss. Not bad. You made good on your promise. And we've got one less worthless gang to divvy up the spoils. A shame. I'd love to see the look on Mason's face one more time before you put him down. Some alpha. Leading his pack into a death trap. You don't betray me and live. Nice to see we have something in common. So tell me, you've been over boss for a while now. Followed through on your promises. You claimed the rest of the park, got us out in the Commonwealth, and now Nuka World's lit up like a Christmas tree. Was it worth it? This is the life. Wouldn't trade it for the world. You bet it is. And with this place more or less operational, all we've got to do is sit back and profit. I only regret wasting all those plans I had for Gage. Although I'm sure he's bound to screw up sooner or later. You just let me know if you ever tire of him. And then this is one of the most insane quest rewards in the whole game. This is the best melee weapon, well certainly the best guaranteed melee weapon in the game, and it's not even close. Like, Throat Slicer is good, but it's only really good because it's a Disciple's Blade. You're really not going to be benefiting much from the bleed damage on the Throat Slicer, because Disciple Blades are just so strong. 
that the enemy's gonna die before taking bleed damage anyway. But yeah, taking one of the strongest melee weapons and then putting instigating on it. Absolutely absurd. I feel like the only thing that could give that competition, as far as random drops go, would be an instigating baseball bat or an instigating sledgehammer. That being said, we are still going to buy the throat slicer because one, it's 4,000 caps we can throw away, and two, the throat slicer has the serrated hacking blade, which I think is a better option for the instigating disciples blade. The serrated hacking blade does the same amount of base damage, but instead of applying bleed like the cutlass does, it does extra limb damage and has a chance to cripple. As I just said before, bleed damage is completely irrelevant when it comes to the instigating disciples blade, so the serrated hacking blade is just better. It weighs slightly less too. I'm also going to go ahead and buy all the 762 rounds and then convert caps into 5mm rounds. Same thing here with Shelby. I'm also just going to buy some shipments off of Shelby to get under a thousand caps. So yeah, we're going to take this hacking blade off of the throat slicer. Or the serrated hacking blade that is. We'll throw it onto the instigating one. And then let's just go ahead and put the cutlass blade on this. So that way we get the... This one has the bleed damage from the legendary effect, as well as bleed damage from the cutlass blade. With all of that taken care of, let's go ahead and do the farming route one more time. And maybe we'll get some uh, legendary drops this time around. Who do we got? Disciples. And super mutants. And there is a legendary disciple, so... We will be able to see what they've got, probably after we take down all these super mutants. Legendary... Huh. Why isn't it... It's not showing me what they have. Okay. Well, we are hidden. I'm gonna hope this doesn't backfire on me. Ooh. I think I like this better than the VATS Enhanced Combat Rifle. I was actually thinking earlier that I wanted to kind of retire the lucky uh, lever action rifle, and this would make a good replacement kind of for both, because I don't really think we need fats enhanced as much with all the unyielding gear we have. And since no one saw that, these guys are not hostile, so that's great. Yeah, I'm really glad I took that disciple out. Holy crap. Let's continue with the rest of the route. Wait, isn't there a glowing one over here? Yeah, there's... yep. Alright, glowing one taken out. Oh, and a reaver. Eh. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and use the lucky. The lucky rifle. Caution. Are there more, more ghouls around here than I realized? Oh, guess so. Okay. Yeah, I guess we'll give the lucky lever action rifle one last hurrah. Oh. There's a blood worm. Oh, I was gonna say, apparently that didn't attract any of his friends, but there they are. Okay, let's see what we've got going on up at this area. Someone already fighting down here. Let's 
going on down here? Wait. Bloodworm versus a pack brahmin? And a... Why do we have a brahmin versus a bloodworm versus a behemoth? What is this random encounter? This is madness, and it's a glowing behemoth. I can't remember the last time I found one of these in the wild. Crazy. Okay, we have a legendary operator up there, and they're fighting against the pack. Cue the battle music. Wait, two legendary operators? Huh. I think. So wait, if I kill one... If I kill them in the heat of battle... Are they gonna be hostile to me? Nope. They are totally fine with me. Excellent. And this one had a rad powered right arm. I mean, plus five strength seems good. Actually, doesn't seem like a bad alternative to unyielding. Cool. And then, like before, we'll head over east and see what we've got going over here. Is there still something going on over here? Or was the behemoth... Yeah, maybe the behemoth took the place of the legendary death claw we found last time. Right? Yeah, looks like we had a settler and their brahmin who got attacked by a bloodworm and a behemoth. Crazy. Well, that was a fun little trip. I enjoyed that. Let's... Let's head back. Oh, there are stingwings here. Okay, so I guess on our way back we can see what's going on over here. Operators again. So far it just seems like all operator pillagers. And yeah, they're fighting gunners. And wouldn't you know it, there's a legendary gunner. And we have disciples here still. From last time I'm guessing. Captain, let's crit you. And where was that legendary gunner? Where did that legendary gunner go? I feel like I'm going crazy here because there was a legendary gunner. Like, I thought they were kind of in this g general area, but they are nowhere to be found. And there's a bunch of other bodies around here, so I don't feel like they would have despawned. Man, that's really sad. I don't see them anywhere. Yeah, I'm thinking they had to have despawned because... There's just no trace of them. I checked out further in case maybe a grenade sent them flying, but like I don't think it would have sent them flying super far. Well, with that complete, I think that's where I will end this episode. It was actually a pretty fun run of Nuka World, except for Home Sweet Home. Um, a lot of the time Nuka World can be kind of tedious all around, but I think it definitely helped that for my heavy guns run, I went straight for open season instead of clearing out the parks. So yeah, I think what I might end up doing is just do some more farming, that uh, legendary farming route that I just went on. And I'll keep the recorder going so I can record any cool drops that I get and any potential deaths that might happen, fingers crossed. So I can include that kind of in the next episode. But for now, that's going to do it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Have a good one. Bye.